there's high achievers that can make money. Like, like money is one component of achievement. And I see a lot of guys out there that make a lot of money, but their personal lives are a disaster. Um, they're mm -hmm. completely out of shape. They're not sleeping at night. Their relationship with their wife or their girlfriend is utterly absurd. And it's, you know, slowly killing them inside. Um, so my definition of a high achiever goes beyond just making bank. Like anybody can become a millionaire or a multimillionaire. In fact, I mean, if you're not aiming to be a multimillionaire by the time you're 30, the latest 40, you've got something kind of sideways going on in your life. Um, sure. But unplugging from the matrix in addition to making, you know, the money, it, sort of like red pilling yourself is essentially the sort of guys that I like to hang out with and work with. Hey, this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors. Check this out. Hey, thank you so much to our sponsor, Tranquil Turtle Massage. They're located right in the heart of Coeur d'Alene and Tracy is a master massage specialist. She specializes in her signature massages, Hanu Infusion, Hanu Ashiatsu, as well as Gua Sha and Manual Lymphatic Drainage. My wife and I go see Tracy and her team every single month and I can tell you it's the best thing that we've ever decided to do. Tell her that I sent you and save 25 bucks on your massage package. And while you're there, make sure that you check out CDA Brows Body and Ink. It's Coeur d'Alene's best tattoo brows, plasma, fiberglass tightening, and PMU services. Tell them I sent you and save 100 bucks on CDA Brows Body and Ink today. Uh, Richard, you're an entrepreneur, best-selling author, coach, investor, content creator, and your speaker. You also have multiple, multiple podcasts that have over 250 million views, over a million subscribers. This is where you help men understand the truth about money, self-care, intersexual dynamics. Man, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome, Eric. Thanks for having me, brother. Uh, we go back to kick things off a little bit on the show. Where did you grow up and what was childhood like for you? Where did I grow up? Well, I was born in the UK, but I grew up mostly in the greater Toronto area. So okay. childhood was... Uh, it was interesting for me because I was that kid that had a stutter, uh, buck teeth until braces fixed that. Uh, I was also a little bit different than the other kids because I got uh, third degree burns in my upper body, my chest, my arms, my neck and stuff like that. So I had an interesting, more introverted sort of childhood, a uh, bit of a headbanger, you know, long hair. I listened to my music a lot with the headphones on, had very few friends. Um, nice. But uh, a lot of that changed by the time I hit 19, 20 or so. Okay. Yeah. I know that, you know, after doing like reading through your website there, you were studying the best in the world in business in your early twenties. And, and most people were out there partying, including myself. But was it, what was it that inspired you to get into business and entrepreneurship at that age? Um, well, actually I spent a good part of my twenties working in the corporate gig. So in credit collections, credit repair, uh, the, uh, finance industry, you know, if you will. And um, I took a package after doing that for quite a number of years. And I went home and I always had the entrepreneurial sort of spirit in me. Like when I was a kid, I used to deliver newspapers, shovel driveways, cut grass. A lot of times I would contract a part of my paper route and sort of have my friends do it. And I would go out and collect the, uh, the payment, which was mostly tip based, which was a better way to do it. Um, so I always found ways to sort of um, make money, you know, for myself. And I just wanted to move into it. Like I saw that there was no real bright future and freedom for me lining somebody else's pocket with gold, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So true there. You, your website, it says unplug from the matrix of comforting lies with the cold, hard, uncomfortable truths and become the best version of yourself. Can you deep dive into that a little bit more? And, and how can folks figure out how to become the best version of themselves? Um, yeah. So let's deal with that in two parts. And so unplugging from the yeah. matrix. So this is something that kind of hit me hard in three waves. Um, you've probably heard the term red pilling and, um, there was three things that sort of happened to me. So the first thing was my divorce. Um, you know, I was married for a few years and, um, my take on it was, uh, didn't work out, married the wrong person. You just untie the knot and you go your separate ways and everything will be tickety boo. But, um, I learned quite quickly after the first phone call talking to my divorce lawyer, that that's not generally the way things go and I should buckle down and, you know, this is what I may expect. And I, and what he said I was to expect, I got that times about 20. Um, so that was like the first unplugging moment for me was that relationships and marriage and divorce weren't exactly what I was told they were you know, going to be because you grow up on a steady diet of uh, Disney movies and, you know, the love and, you know, till death do us part once you take your vows and you realize, okay, well, that's not the reality. So there was that, that was kind of step one. Step two was a few years into the divorce, I was dealing with a new legislative bill in Canada that was going to change um, my debt relief business. So I had started up a credit card debt relief business around 2003. And our big play was we would 
offer a better solution to consumers that would get them out of debt faster and with less damage to their credit rating than existing forms. So bankruptcy, nonprofit credit accounts, and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. when you end up being so innovative and sa saving people so much money so quickly, that's going to start to piss off some of the banks and credit card companies. So they lobbied the government bodies to change the legislation, which would essentially have delayed our first revenue event by eight months and cut it by about a third, which was not practical because the profit margins just really weren't there. So I spent two years with lobbyists talking to politicians from the left all the way down to the right. They all made big promises of we're here for the consumer and, you know, we want to make sure people have these options, but they pass the legislation anyway and, you know, flatline the whole deal. And uh, thankfully, I had a great lawyer on staff that found a, a little hole in the legislation that let us proceed anyway. Uh, but that actually ran pretty much every other competitor out of business around the same time. So that was another big red pilling moment for me as well. And then after that, I got involved in a long-term relationship with a single mommy. She had a couple of kids in tow from her prior marriage, uh, over-invested in that relationship, ego invested in things, which I thought were true, which again, weren't true. Uh, she ended up cheating on me, uh, you know, safe world theory collapse, this sort of thing. It's like this back to back to back sort of thing. It's like, I kept getting sideswiped by life mm -hmm. in ways that just didn't make sense. And I remember, you know, I had this business coach, um, and we were at this EO retreat with our forum and he was going on about rich, you know, you're a weapon, you know, you do this, that, and the other thing, you're phenomenal at these things. And I kept asking myself, why did I get hung up? Why did I get stuck on these things over and over again? And it's because I subscribed to a narrative and stories that society and culture had told me that simply weren't true. And I built this, um, theory in my head, the safe world theory that basically collapsed like a house of cards, one thing after the other in such a way that it left me almost useless, you know, for a good eight to 12 months after about the third bout. So I had to kind of figure, figure myself out. And in the process of doing so, you kind of make your wounds your work. And, yep. you know, making my wounds my work was probably the best thing that I could have ever done. And, you know, I shared those experiences and stories with people after a while on my YouTube channel. They started asking me, like, I got a lot of emails and DMs. How do I fix this? This is my situation. I saw a video on that. What, you know, what would you recommend? So I started coaching people. I got requested to speak at a, events. I put a book together. Uh, I think in total, I've got half a billion views now on a lot of my videos. So that's where I am today now after all of those uh, difficult times, if you will. Man, what a crazy journey that you've been on. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, man. It, but now, like with your journey in your past, you've been able to help men. And you have this community called the 1% where you help elite unplugged men. They are putting this dent in the universe and holding each other accountable. Mm. What is the 1% community and what makes high achievers different than anyone else? Okay. So the community is just something I put together because people wanted to hang out. They wanted to get to know me. And rather than do the whole, Hey, if you're ever in my city, I want to buy you a coffee or dinner. I thought to myself, look, I'm, I'm not doing that. I, you know, I don't know you, but, um, you know, I learned the value of a community after talking to some high level entrepreneurs and I put my, put mine together, uh, set it as a high price point, um, and basically vetted the guys that came in. And it's, it's, it's not huge. We're not talking thousands. We're talking, you know, like into the hundreds now. Sure. Um, but we're global and I, I've got entrepreneurs in there as doctors, lawyers, accountants, uh, guys that I call fixers, you know, guys that fix, you know, problems for like politicians and stuff like that. So that's the kind of crew that I put together in that. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, we were able to build something that was sort of like bigger than the sum of its parts, which mm -hmm. it has been. Um, the second part to that question was what again, Eric? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, what, what is it that makes high achievers different than, yeah. than anyone else? Well, there's there's high achievers that can make money like like money is one component of achievement and i see a lot of guys out there that make a lot of money but their personal lives are a disaster um they're mm -hmm. completely out of shape they're not sleeping at night their relationship with their wife or their girlfriend is utterly absurd and it's you know slowly killing them inside um so my definition of a high achiever goes beyond just making bank like Anybody can become a millionaire or a multimillionaire. In fact, I mean, if you're not aiming to be a multimillionaire by the time you're 30, the latest 40, you've got something kind of sideways going on in your life. Um, sure. But unplugging from the matrix in addition to making, you know, the money, sort of like red pilling yourself is essentially the sort of guys that I like to hang out with and work with. Mm. When you're working with men, like what is the biggest struggle that you see them with having? I wish I could say it was tied around, you know, beliefs outside of women, but it's always tied into women. Almost okay. like two thirds of the time, most of the mistakes guys make with life and things that hold them up are tied into their beliefs and the ego investments they make in women. And I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt. Um, and it took a work, quite a bit of work for me to sort of figure that out. Um, but that seems to be the thing that, that like holds most guys back is what I found.
Interesting. Wow. I wouldn't have thought that. I thought it, like, it, it, you talk about like clarity and things like that. Is that an issue that, that comes up with those guys at all? Like clarity on just what they want to do in business and life? Um, most of the guys I'm already deal with make decent money, like, you know, pretty good money. Yeah. Like they're seven, eight figure guys. Right. So, nice. um, you know, they figured that part out of their life, but it, like some of the most, you know, bizarre conversations I've had, you know, I was talking to a guy early this morning and is, you know, he's, he's, he's an eight figure guy, but his wife wants to open up the relationship. He doesn't understand why, you know, she wants to basically go and bang other people. And he thought that he was enough and he's not really understanding it. He bought the house that she wanted. He moved her mom into the house. He renovated the kitchen the way that he wanted, you know, did all these things, you know, made all these compromises for her and he's, and he's finding that she's basically betraying him. Right. You know, those, mm-hmm. there's a difference between men and women when they go outside of the relationship. I think that men cheat sure. and that women betray. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Man. Now I, I want to talk about your podcast because podcasting, it, there's a lot of podcasters that listen to my show. I used to have two podcasts and, and running two podcasts is crazy, <laughs> you yeah. know, but for you, you've got two podcasts. Um, I love connecting with other podcasters in with these shows, the unplugged alpha and playing to win, for those who don't know, what's the journey that you take listeners on on these shows and, and how has having a podcast helped you in your business? Um, I think the cool thing about a podcast is it lets you talk to interesting people and have conversations in a public forum that other people can benefit from. I think that's probably one of the best things about podcasting. Um, yeah. It's very cool in that sense. As far as the basis of the of the two podcasts, uh, the main one that I spend a committed amount of time on is the Unplugged Alpha podcast. It's sort of built around my book, my channel on it. Um, I've got a supplement line built around the ecosystem. So there's a whole like s- set of systems and processes that are all built in place. The Plane to Win one is 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 an interesting one because I started that really wanting to talk to guys about their experience in life and how they play to win versus uh, playing not to lose. Because while they sound kind of similar, they're two totally different things. Um, so I've, so I've talked to a lot of interesting people about that lately. Um, I probably haven't had a podcast out in about a month, but lately I've been doing them mostly as solo podcasts sort of talking about topics and Mm -hmm. I'm kind of enjoying that a little bit more too. So, um, it's ever evolving, but I mean, the main one, the unplugged alpha is definitely the one that you want to check out if you want to really kind of deep dive into what I'm, what I'm talking about and what I'm doing to help guys out. Yeah. And you, 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 like you said, you released the book, uh, the, the unplugged alpha, it's the no BS guide to winning with women and life there. You know, what are readers going to get out of that book when they get and get into it? (laughs) They're going to get a lot. Um, they're going to have to buckle down because a lot of the stuff that I talk about in that book are, is, is going to be very uncomfortable. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's all fact-based. It's all truthful. They're, they're going to learn about the dynamics of relationships, uh, why women choose men the way they do, why that changes throughout their life. Um, you know, topics around self-care, making money, making better decisions with people in your life. Um, probably about, again, two-thirds of the book focuses on dealing with having better experiences with women. And then the rest of it's kind of like ecosystems around that, like, you know, self-care. Like one of the chapters is uh, on uh, combat sports and why I believe all men need to learn how to fight. With all of the events that you've been to, with all of the entrepreneurs that you've met, you know, you've spent over $250,000 plus, you know, going to all these events and things like that. What is the most important thing that you've learned going to all these events and, and meeting all these entrepreneurs and business folks? People. It's, it's all about connecting with great people. Um, you know, they say that if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. So put yourself in bigger rooms. You know, you can do that by paying a admission to go to an event or go to a, a speaking gig and, you know, being around better people, but you have to be super selective about it because, um, you're going to form a tribe with these people and you're always going to become the average of the ones that you're surrounding yourself with and spending the most time with. So if, if they're not aligned with, with where you're going to, um, you got to be careful about that. So yeah, there's, there's some decisive things that you've got to do when it comes to doing the work on yourself. And for me, that seems to be the biggest one. Come on. Yeah. I was a guest on Brad Lee's dropping bombs podcast earlier this year. And one of the things that that him and I had a conversation around was, Hey, you got to hang around with people that are living life that you want to live, be selective. Uh, you know, but he's like the relationships is the new currency, you Mm -hmm. know, like if you're not having good relationships with people, you're nowhere in business and things like that. So it's so true on that. You know, you're successful, you have money, you have the cars. What is it that drives you to be successful or keep going at this point in your career? I think at this point, like money is like, whatever, it's just money. Um, it's, it's more the impact than the people. So one, it's the impact that I have on people's lives, you know, with the conversations that I have. And I love the, you know, look, uh, this, this, and this was going sideways story. Then I watched 
the sequence of videos or this playlist or I read your book and now I'm here sort of thing. And it's really cool because um, like I was down in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. I was doing this off-road thing with uh, a bunch of entrepreneurs and I was surprised how many um, Mexican kids, you know, when I say kids, I mean like most of the guys that approach me are probably in their twenties, you know, for the most part, um, sure. watch my content, have, have reasonable, I mean, just okay English. And, you know, they give me the same sort of stories. You know, you saved my life. I had a noose around my neck a few months ago because things were so bad. And now I've got this real estate and I fixed this part of my life and I lost 40 pounds and all this sort of stuff. So I like that part of it. And it's also, you know, making the new friends and the connections. Like I do some of the coolest retreats for the guys in my community. Um, and like the get togethers are just amazing. Like we've got a very, very tight bond. Come on. That's the best way to be, man. What is one human skill or what's one skill that every human should have? Oh, you got to be world-class at something, um, something useful. Uh, you know, it's probably something that I should add some clarity to. I mean, if you want to have impact, you want to have reach, you want to be influential in the world, you, you got to be a world-class at something that is in demand for sure. Yeah. Come on. Now, Problem solving skills too. Yes, totally. <laughs> right. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people can't solve basic problems in life. And I think that that's a kind of a lost art is, is, is being a great problem solver as well. You know, a lot of people ask me like, you know, what's a really important skill to have as an entrepreneur? And it's, you know, for me, it's problem solving skills. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all the business is, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a sequence of problems. <laughs> <laughs> you can't solve problems, man. You're nothing, man. Yeah, exactly. So true. What are you most excited about as we head into 2023? You know, what's on top of your plate there? What's, what's coming up next for you? Uh, just, you know, continue doing what I'm doing. Somebody asked me the other day, like, you know, what's the end game for all this? Like, you know, like, when do you stop? And I just basically said, like, when it stops being fun, right? Yeah. So I don't really have a very long-term plan. You know, I've, I've done a lot, you know, I'd be happy if life ended, you know, tomorrow and that was it. Um, I feel like I've, I've, um, you know, made a huge impact and I think the people that I've talked to and interacted with have had a great experience. So, um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I've got to uh, follow a book in the works, which is kind of like a deeper dive down the rabbit hole on the first book on some things that I miss. Um, Sweet. I've got some content creation, you know, plans for next year as well too, but yeah, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Come on. That's awesome, man. I, I love to finish the show out with a, a music question. I'm a big music guy. You, you said that you were kind of the metalhead guy earlier. I'm a big yeah, metalhead yeah. guy as well. Yeah. Uh, what's a favorite band for you or, or what kind of music do you like to listen to? I don't listen to much of the new stuff today, to be honest with you. Like, you know, for me, yeah. it's like the old, like the old school seventies, you know, rock and roll. I obviously, you know, listen to a lot of heavy metal and uh, rock from the eighties and nineties. Um, I mean, if I was pressed to pick, somebody said, you know, if you were stranded on an Island, like what, what album would you have with you? And I, <laughs> it's tough, but I'd probably have to go with something like Pink Floyd's Delicate Sand of Thunder, which is a live uh, event. Yeah. Oh man. Great band for sure. Yeah. I, it was funny because I was listening to Mother Love Bone the other day and they, they, you know, they came out in 1990 and I'm thinking, man, most of the people that are, uh, that I know and probably have no idea what, what, what that band is, you know, it's like the early starts of Pearl Jam and stuff like that back in the day, man. So it's, yeah. it's fun, man. Um, but man, Richard, you're such a world changer, man. I appreciate you taking time out of your day. This, your book, your content, everything is excellent. People need to be following you. And uh, it's truly an honor to have you on my show, man. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining me today. Thanks for having me, Eric. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate it. I hope that I was able to bring some value into your life today with the guest that was on my show. If you could do me one favor, please just hit that subscribe button. That's going to help me spread this message out to other people and hopefully impact some lives. I believe in you. Keep fighting for your goals, your dreams, and your purpose. Have an amazing day.